Hi everyone, I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. Today is a very special video. You guys have been requesting that I do a mask tutorial and shout out to V Ratsova, I hope I said that right, um, for really, really pressing me to do this. But I didn't want to put out the same video that everyone else was putting out there. And no matter how well those videos are doing, I asked myself, well, what would you wear um, as a mask? And I know you guys are gonna love it. You do not have to um, have any sewing experience, any type of experience at all. And this one, just two cuts. We're going to do it. It's gonna be super simple. We're just gonna cut 10 inches off the bottom of a t-shirt. Now you have a crop t-shirt. Then you wanna either take the front or the back and cut it down the middle. And if you're using coffee filters, you just take it and fold it in half and put it in the middle. Fold one side over it, fold the other side over it so you're folding it almost into thirds. And you wanna make sure you leave um, enough room to cover your mouth and your nose. So it should be about five inches. So we have our DIY no sew mask. I'm just going to put it over my mouth, tie it to the back and be done. All right, so maybe you want just a little bit of graphics, a little bit something more on your mask. I have a really simple solution for you. If you want to customize it, it's really, really easy. All you need is some type of paint. It could be either a fabric paint or acrylic paint. And you just print off what you want it to say on your printer. And I'm gonna show you how to cut it out. I have an X-Acto knife and I'm just gonna use the X-Acto knife in order to carve out the letters. And I normally do all my vertical lines first and then turn the page and do my horizontal and then do my curves. But in order to get the paper to adhere or to stick temporarily to the fabric, I'll use just some elementary school glue stick and apply it to the back of my stencil and then stick it to the fabric and it normally, as long as you don't use too much, it normally does not leave any type of residue afterwards. And then use fabric paint and a flat brush. And I'll put that brush in the paint as lightly as possible, just blotting it and just blot it on top of the paper lightly until it's filled in with the paint. And then immediately afterwards, take the stencil off carefully. And if you wanted to fill in your letters, you could have just cut the middle part out and glued that in the middle. Then just let it dry completely, normally 24 hours and your mask is ready. All right, so here is my mask. And this time, rather than putting the filter in first, I am going to put it on and then put the filter in. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I find that with the t-shirt material, the fibers are a little bit looser than woven, like tightly woven materials. And so I personally like the filter to be directly next to my skin or my mouth, um, breathing that versus the fibers of the fabric. All right, so you want something that looks a little bit more like a traditional mask. I got you. However, before we do that, if you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe. I have a whole host of other upcycling videos, no matter whether you are just wanting to start to get to, into upcycling. And don't worry, I am not a sewing snob. I'm not one of those people who think that um, you have to start off doing everything looking super good in order for it to be upcycling, wherever you are, you can start to be kind to your environment and get more into um, sustainable fashion right here. And did I mention when I reach 100,000 subscribers, we are doing something very special. I will be doing a special upcycle for one lucky subscriber. So definitely subscribe and share this video so everyone knows all the amazing stuff going on here. All right, so I have two really easy no so variations for you. And once again, you'll just need a t-shirt, scissors, and filters for either one. So let's do the easiest one first. Once again, I'm gonna cut off 10 inches from the bottom. Then I'll cut it up the sides and then cut off the hem. I'll take one layer and lay it flat because I only need one side for this one. Next, I'll fold it in half the long way and then fold it in half again. Now I'll measure four and a half inches on the folded side and add some pins there. And you can mark it with a pencil if you don't have pins. Now I'm gonna turn it around so I can cut strips on the non-folded side. So I'll just cut one inch away from the edge on each side until I get to the pins. Then I'll move the strips out of the way and cut the middle section away. Pull the strings to make the edges curl up and then open it up. Now you can add a filter in between and fold it back up. The folded side will be the bottom so that the filter doesn't slide out. And if you wanna add a little pizzazz but don't wanna paint it, you can use a pen and make a smiley face or whatever you want. 
it would have been really cool if the t-shirt was yellow then it could be like an emoji mask but i didn't have any yellow t-shirts in the house all right so we have our smiley face mask and i'm just gonna put it on and tie it um at the top and then tie it at the bottom and this one is super cool because like if you want to do a happy face on one side and a bad face on the other side or um just another emotion a happy face with a tongue a happy face um i don't know with braces whatever your actual smile looks like so yeah all right for the next one i have a slight variation let's cut off about 15 inches off the shirt then i'll cut open either the front or the back down the middle next i'll open it up and fold it into thirds the long way then I'll fold it in half. Once again, I'll measure off four and a half inches on the folded side. These dimensions definitely vary depending on who you're making the mask for and how far they want it to go back towards their ears. Now I'll cut one inch strips again, but this time I'm gonna cut the folded sides open so that I have three strips on each side. And then once again, I can cut away the excess in the middle. I'll pull my strings to make them roll up and then turn it over to do the other side. Once everything is cut and opened up, this is what it should look like. And the filter will go just right in the middle with each side folded on top. Next, I'll braid my strings, which kind of closes the sides a bit and also tapers it a little bit as well. Then I'll just knot the ends to keep them braided. All right, lastly, here is our tie-dye mask. For those of you who don't wanna paint anything or write anything on it, you can use a t-shirt that already has some sort of design or pattern on it, and it's braided. And you just slip in your filter and tie it on your face, just like the last one. And when you get ready to take it off, you just open it up, take out the filter, and throw it in the wash. All right, so that is it. I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on the whole mask tutorial thing. I really wanted to do something for those of you who have maybe tried the sewing tutorials and could not get into that. And these are definitely the masks that I am going to be using. I won't be sewing any masks. And the whole mask situation is definitely giving me a little bit of anxiety. Um, there may or may not be a video about that. I recorded a little bit on my vlog for my members only. And and um, it got, it turned, <laughs> if I post it, you'll see it. If not, then you won't. However, um, definitely subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And I have a whole host of other DIY videos. Some are no sew, some are sewing. So take your pick. There's plenty to choose from. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.